Okay, well, it's not news, I suppose, that the media roots against America, um, especially in recent years. And, and especially now that America is governed by a man that they despise with every fiber of their being. But this spectacle of the media rooting against us has been especially grotesque and outrageous and traitorous, traitorous at least in a moral sense, during this coronavirus crisis, I think. And it makes you think back to the very early days of 9-11. I've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, it's like you know, we, we've, we've always talked about, right after 9-11, there was, at least it seemed at the time, there was a very real national unity for a while. Didn't last. It was temporary. But even the media, for the most part, uh, Democrats, Republicans, most everybody, for a time, a brief, glorious time in history, there seemed to be a real sense of common purpose. And everybody was on the same side for at least a few days. But we never had that with this. And uh, I wonder if we're even capable of it anymore. I think I think probably not. I think we're at a point in, in our in our in our in our culture where we're not capable of that kind of unity, even when we're facing a common uh, threat. So I want to talk about just one example of the media rooting against us and, and celebrating, seeming to celebrate our, in their minds, demise. And in fact, before I do that, just one other really egregious recent example that I happen to see online. When I was when I was uh, yesterday, uh, this is a woman named Samira Khan, who's a foreign policy analyst, and uh, here she is now. Follow this exchange on Twitter. Samira says, "Sick of the following COVID nineteen talking points: one, it's a hoax; two, severity and death count equals exaggerated; three, China is to blame. Feel free to add to the list." Then some random guy responds, "China has to be blamed, babes. Isn't that obvious?" Then Samira says, "Babes." Puke face emoji. Uh, no, I don't know what your crap media is telling you, but the world should be thanking China for their efforts. Now, I don't know if this woman lives in America or not. I think she does. But that was so egregious that I had to mention it. Thanking China. We should be thanking China for their efforts. Their efforts in starting and lying about and thereby causing the uncontrollable spread of a deadly virus. We should thank them for that. Anyway, so on to the AP. Here's uh, the AP's tweet of their article. Uh, the caption says, it wasn't supposed to be this way. America was the greatest of all nations with can-do spirit in its DNA, but now it leads only in COVID-19 deaths. What's gone wrong? And then the title of the article, coronavirus shakes the conceit of American exceptionalism. The byline is uh, Calvin Woodward wrote it, but then it says that Lauren Neergaard in Washington, Ted Anthony in Pittsburgh, and Aya Batrai in Dubai contributed to this report. So a, re a reporter who doesn't live in America contributed to a report about how America is not exceptional. So that's, that's just great. Reading from the article, it says, when the coronavirus pandemic came from distant lands to the United States, it was met with cascading failures and incompetencies by a system that exists to prepare, protect, prevent and cut citizens a check in a national crisis. The molecular menace posed by the new coronavirus has shaken the conceit of American exceptionalism like nothing big enough to see with your own eyes. A nation with unmatched power, brazen ambition, and aspirations through the arc of history to be humanity's shining city upon a hill cannot come up with enough simple cotton swabs despite the wartime manufacturing supply powers assumed by President Donald Trump. Uh, then it continues on, for effective diagnostic testing, Crucial in an infectious outbreak, look abroad to the, United Arab, to the United Arab Emirates or Germany or New Zealand, which jumped to test the masses before many were known to be sick. Or to South Korean exceptionalism, tapped by Maryland's Republican Governor Larry Hogan, who accepted a plane load of 500,000 testing kits uh, from South Korea to make up for the U.S. shortfall. Um, Simple gloves, complicated ventilators, special lab chemicals, test swabs, mask gowns, face shields, hospital beds, emergency payouts from the government, benefits for idled worker, workers. Each has been subject to chronic, chronic shortages, uh, spot shortages, calcified bureaucracy, or some combination. Uh, okay, and then it goes on from there. I can't read the whole thing. It's very it's quite lengthy. Now, here's the thing, and you get this a lot from the media. Many of the points being raised that I just read there and, and throughout the article are not wrong. 
Uh, it would certainly be hard to argue that the response from our country has been stellar, exactly. And we were caught unprepared, and we shouldn't have been unprepared. And we have government agencies that are supposed to be keeping us prepared for this sort of thing, like the CDC. And uh, they didn't do their job. And many of the other things that this article points out are true, yes. But they marshal all of these facts in service to an ideological point, And then they cover it in a falsehood. The ideological point is that American exceptionalism is just a conceit and a false one. And the falsehood is that we lead only in COVID-19 deaths, which implies, obviously, first of all, that we don't lead in any other category, which is not true. But it's also untrue that we lead in COVID-19 deaths. That, you know, the, the only way to get to that statistic, and the media has to know this. So when, so when, you, when, you, when you've got the media constantly saying that we lead in COVID-19 deaths, they have to know that what they're saying is not true. Uh, at, I mean, at best, highly misleading, but really simply untrue. Yet they keep saying it. Why do they keep saying it? Well, it's, I mean, it's almost like they want it to be true. Or at least they want us to believe that it's true. And this is what I'm talking about with rooting against America. Um, so the only way to get to that statistic, the only way to support the idea that we lead in deaths is to do two extremely disingenuous things. One is to ignore population size and to just do a straight up comparison between our total deaths and uh, total deaths in like New Zealand, you know, and Denmark, completely putting aside that our population is many, 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 many times larger than those countries. So obviously we're going to have more deaths. Then you also have to ignore total cases. And of course, we don't know the total cases for any country. And the fact that we don't know that is a problem because it also means that the death toll is probably a lot lower than we think. But still, obviously, if you have more cases, you're going to have more deaths. And obviously, America is going to have more cases than a place like New Zealand because we have a lot more people. And also, we have a lot more people coming here from other parts of the, country, from other parts of the world. Um, now, according to USA Today, and this is in an article meant to basically debunk Trump's claim that our death rate is low compared to other countries, which is actually true that it is low compared to many other countries. But in the process of trying to debunk that claim, the USA Today, uh, USA Today did admit, quote, when compared only to the 10 countries with the most cases, the U.S. ranks as the second lowest mortality rate as a percentage of total cases. That means eight of those countries hit hardest by the coronavirus have higher mortality rates than the U.S. Well, that's the honest comparison to make. You have to look at other countries that got a ton of cases because they have larger populations in, in most cases and, and, and also because maybe they have more people coming into their countries. Um, and then... Uh, uh, or you could look at deaths per 100,000 people or per a million people. And when you do that, so you're looking at it more on a per capita basis. And when you do that, we're nowhere near the top of the list. In fact, I don't even think, I don't think we even make it into the, into the top 10 uh, when you look at it that way. And then, in order to claim that America leads in deaths, you also have to take China at its word on its death count. And you have to assume that a country like India with a billion plus people claiming only 700 deaths, you have to assume that that number is accurate. And not to say that India would be lying about their death count. Maybe they would be. But also you have to think in a country like India, they, they may not have successfully counted all the people who actually died of this illness. Um, so, but you have to put that to the side. You have to assume that in India, with, with, with one point, I think it's 1.3 billion people, only 700 have died of coronavirus. Uh, and China's being honest. So you assume all of that. And then and then even then, you don't get to, to America having the most cases. Now, none of this, again, is to say that our response in America has been good. It hasn't, in my view. But the media wants us to believe that it's the worst and that we're the hardest hit and that we're the most incompetent. And you can practically see the gleeful smiles when you read this stuff. This is what happens when you buy into the narrative that America is the villain of the world. And then when bad stuff happens to your country, if that's if you've bought into a narrative that your country is the villain, bad stuff happens to your country, and then I guess you feel pretty good about it. Well, I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Matt Wall Show. If you did, go ahead and hit that subscribe button right down there so you can stay up to date on all of our future content.